For the majority of my life, I've enjoyed watching films in two different ways. The first of which being what is on the surface. I enjoy what is physically being shown to me, like most of the viewing audience upon the film's release. But like any good piece of art or book, looking closer and reading between the lines can sometimes reveal an entirely different media product. We define this through the use of semiotics. Semiotics, in terms of film, is the study of science. In broader terms, it takes on board how the symbolic, written, and technical signs and aspects of a film are used to construct and convey meaning. In addition to this, semiotics also looks at how the meaning is portrayed and how it is understood. Taking this on board, I will break down key sections of the film Toy Story 3 to see what kind of messages are being portrayed. So let's take a look. So let's begin by catching you up to speed. Toy Story 3 begins with a much older Andy being ready and set for college. His toys, which we've seen in the previous two Toy Story films, are dealing with the hardships of being left alone and not being played with. So when the opportunity arises with Sunnyside, a local daycare, they see it as a chance to relive the feeling of being played with. Upon arrival, Woody, the cowboy, notices that something isn't quite right and abandons the group to be tormented in Lotso's personal prison. After a few days of cruel treatment by the toddlers in the caterpillar room, Woody returns and hatches an escape plan that will eventually end up with the gang and, La and Lotso in a landfill, in which they have a near-death experience with an incinerator, but end up being saved while Lotso ends up tied to a garbage truck. Speaking of Lotso, let's take a closer look at this complex character. Lotso Hugging Bear or more commonly known in the film as Lotso, is in my opinion one of the most complex Disney villains so far. Both on the surface and in between the lines. On the surface, he plays the facade of a lovable and cuddly plushy toy that becomes a maniacal, evil leader as the toys discover his history. But what if I told you that Lotso is inspired by most of the tyrannical dictators from the past? Let me put it to you this way. After being replaced by his own by his owner Daisy, Lotso's personality shifts from kind and caring to become more controlled, unsympathetic and straight up cruel to the toys around him. When he eventually comes across Sunnyside, he immediately asserts himself as the leader and manipulates the others into following his rule essentially taking what should be a kid's safe haven and turning it into a radical regime. Another example of this would probably be Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars, given that the two of them start off as somebody that you could trust and end up being one of the major villains within their respective films. To elaborate on my point, the movie integrates key characteristics from dictators in our world such as Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler into Lotso to criticise the dictatorship regime. An example of this would be an example of this would be through using surveillance in a gang of close allies to cement his reign over the other toys, much like the other dictators from our past. Let's continue on this journey by breaking down some of the key scenes within the film. And of course, you can't talk about Toy Story 3 without talking about that gut-wrenching incinerator scene. So the furnace scene, as it's called in Toy Story 3, in my opinion has huge amounts of historical context written between the lines. But first, let's look at the colouring of this scene. If you look closely, you'll notice that the walls in the background of this shot have a dull red tint. This is quite obviously because of the fire in the centre of the room, but looking into the connotations for the colour red, you'll discover that red is the colour for danger. Looking around, you'll notice that the rest of the room has a bright orange tint. Orange has the connotation of strength and endurance, which is symbolic when all the characters can get holding hands closer towards the fire. And I did some more digging and this may be a long shot, but Jesse's hat is also red, which could be a small little nod to the danger that they could get to, that they get into towards the end of the film, but that seems too far-fetched to be an actual point. 
In terms of the historical context I mentioned, this scene bears some resemblance to that of the historical event called the Holocaust. Because of the striking resemblance Lotso had to the mannerisms of Hitler I mentioned earlier, and the fact that he leaves them behind to burn, pretty much as the Nazis did with those of the Jewish faith. So now let's move on to key scene two, and we're going from dark and depressing to more worried and light-hearted. Of course I'm talking about the meeting scene towards the start of the film. Now this scene is packed full of colour and hidden messages. To begin with, Woody's predominant colour on his shirt is yellow, which if you look at the connotation for that colour, whilst obviously it displays happiness, also has a lesser known connotation of irrationality, which is a major detail pointing towards how Woody will act in the first half of this film. Also, let's look at the character Buzz. If you look at his head, you notice the purple hood that he wears. Now, the colour purple can sometimes can sometimes symbolise being artificial or fake. This is a crucial hint to when Buzz is reset to his demo mode later on in the film. Because it's not the version of Buzz the viewing audience is used to over the previous two films. Thus making demo mode Buzz an artificial Buzz to the version we know. When the army men are leaving through the window, the camera is angled at a high angle, making it seem like leaving is the best choice, because the remaining toys in a position where they feel vulnerable if they stay behind. So now let us move on to our third and final scene. This scene involves the torture and eventual resetting of Buzz. The resetting of Buzz in this scene is most likely where the true intentions of Lotso are unveiled. And once again, like the previous scene, the colour purple plays a largely significant role in this scene, as it can be found on the doll of Ken, Barbie's significant other, and Lotso himself. And once again, the colour purple is used to show the artificial persona that both toys have demonstrated to persuade the others to stay at Sunnyside. Looking closely into the detail of this scene, you can notice that a singular spotlight is hanging over the chair that Buzz is tied to, which could infer that Buzz would be the key figure in this scene, which it turns out to be. The camera is positioned at a low angle upon the bookworm's arrival, placing him in a state of power status. So allow me to take this time before I end to tell you about denotation and annotation. Are essentially behind these hidden details. We'll start with denotation. The term denotation stands for what we actually see on the screen and the surface meaning we gather from that information. And the term connotation stands for the hidden, hidden meaning which can be inferred or associated with the suggested image. These hidden bits of information or details are often referred to in the media image as Easter eggs. Little points of information that the viewers have to go out of their way to find. To start off with, the bin man seen collecting the trash from Andy's house is wearing a black shirt with a white skull. On the surface, this could in fact be a common t-shirt design within that town or area. But if you look back to the first Toy Story film, doesn't that t-shirt bear a striking resemblance to that of Sid, the main antagonist from that film? Another easter egg I managed to find was in the very opening images of the film. The number on the, t on the front of the train that Woody and Jesse are chasing is 95. Whilst this could be a simple design choice on the behalf of the animators, it could in fact be a nod to the year the first Toy Story film was released in 1995, or when that model of train was released. If you look closely on the back of, the, on the back of Andy's mum's car, the license plate reads A113. A113 refers to a classroom number at the California Institute of Arts. It was the classroom for first year graphic design and character animation where many of the animators of Pixar and Disney and several other students discovered and mastered their craft. The use of A113 in their films is a friendly nod to one another 
that they once shared a, cl shared a classroom, without which they would never know what they were doing now. You got trouble, and I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together, see it through, cause you've got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Some other folks might be a